This call is being recorded. Thank you for your patience. All right. Of course. Sweet. So thankfully, we got the year ahead to look at. And uh, we know we are coming off the full moon in Taurus. So in about a year from now, we'll look at um, the progress of the train here um, that will be stopping off at your 10th house uh, coming into next year. So by the end of May of 2024, you will begin your Jupiter return, which is really, really cool because this makes the ninth house transit of Jupiter through Taurus your rising star year. And this begins May 21st of 2023, when Jupiter enters Taurus. Um, basically, from May to May, Jupiter will be in Taurus. It's going to retrograde near the end of the year. And from experience, when Jupiter transited my ninth house in Capricorn was the year that um, I started to begin to literally rise up, come into more popularity, notoriety. This is actually evolving not only the quality of your philosophy and your way of life and the values with which you set upon your way of life on and how you teach. It's also bringing into fruition as a Scorpio son this evolution and innovation of your relationships. So what the next year ahead for you is going to bring, you're going to be aware of this as leveling up every single relationship you have, bringing your part, the value and quality of your partnerships to the next level. And so this experience of all this is what's going to manifest a much more grounded ph philosophical approach towards how you partner with people in everything you experience you're going to be like oh, okay this is what i believe now it's going to reinforce the values with which you're evolving so that you are manifesting so much more wealth relative to your partnering with and what perspective and philosophical approach once again that teaches you now another level of this jupiter was evolving your pure skills 2018 when when jupiter went over scorpio so pretty much when looking into that jupiter going through your third house is similar to learning how to read tarot for the first time you activated relative to 2016 which was that 12 year cycle of evolution the activation of your psychological attitude and the pure skill, the psychological psychoanalysis and skills that through 2021 you integrated into your lifestyle. Of course, sixth house Aquarius with Saturn and Jupiter um, have constructed advanced lifestyle techniques as a Virgo rising where you rule the sixth house that since then you have mastered. So now that Saturn is in Pisces, you're in this position where you now have mastered the advanced behavioral process of living off your own lifestyle and technique or routine that you know you perhaps can can monetize. Uh, just to kind of establish that Jupiter evolved. The, if if your attitude has this wisdom, the knowledge of how to integrate your abilities into your lifestyle is complete. Where you're you you've now mastered this. So uh, something to keep in mind: Saturn has disciplined your your lifestyle, and and the purpose of this is now that you've mastered your lifestyle, Saturn in your seventh house is integrating this into your relationships with other people. So the next two and a half years is strengthening the standards and the quality of your partnerships. So normally people who go through this transit get married, they get divorced, they go through business part, they get a business partner. Um, it, it, it adds so much more seriousness towards Saturn raising 
your standards and weeding people out who just, you know, waste time. So now that you have mastered this into your behavior, Jupiter that's going into your ninth house are taking the skills for six years that you've spent mastering. Now it's time to teach them. Now the intangible quality of the ideas and the theories that you've had towards socialization with others, psychoanalyzing people's behavior. Now you're able to teach people how to read it on people's body language how to teach tarot, if we're gonna use this analogy, this is the mastery of everything you've learned so that by the time this goes to the 10th house, now you're establishing your legacy and your career as someone who has mastered this. So this is, this is a really good period because we're coming into this individual success as Saturn is aligning and strengthening the nature of partnerships to weed out once again, those who are not really good uh, influences for you. So that's really the the angle here. Uh, all this energy that's congregating in Taurus is definitely preparing very powerfully, uh, not only to break you through, but to establish this grounded foundation. We know you have Pluto in Scorpio. So that's going to be the intensification having this kundalini spirit or, or extreme spirit that relative to the first transits to other Virgo risings, your pure element is going to add this intensity, especially relative to how intense or weird people get around you because of how much sexual tension you generate just from breathing air and people having to, you know, like, right? Like, oh my gosh, like people get nervous around you. You, you like the cool thing about Pluto, like you can bring, you can draw out the, the, excuse my language, you can draw out the bitch in people, or you can expose like how strong, yeah. right? Just by being there. <laughs> uh, that's so true. You're so spot on. <laughs> right. Um, and it, the, the, the sun Pluto x-ray gives, uh, energy gives you x-ray vision. So you could just spot all those insecurities or strengths, right? Depending on, uh, what it is that you see. So this is what now at the Taurus end is manifesting partners, influences that match you, that add wealth, that add to your philosophy, that bring this through. So the first part of this is going to be from May to August where we're going to uh, step into the activation of this. But this activation as a Virgo rising is actually the breakthrough before we complete. And now with that being said, we know that the rest of this Taurus season is going to facilitate the philosophy of instant manifestation for you through partnerships with other people. This is where maybe you might start to see that everything that you intend other people are manifesting it for you. It's coming through other people. You're facilitating other people to do it. You're manifesting for other people. And this is a very powerful place to be. It's definitely going to share more of this relationship relative to this. And coming into May 21st, we know that Pluto is in your sixth house. And this is very key because over the next decade, as Pluto reaches five degrees, right? And just to give you an idea of that, Pluto will reach five degrees coming into, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, you can interrupt at any time if you have any questions. Uh, well, actually, I'm not going to interrupt like last time. I'm going to let you fucking talk this time. Um, but for me, when you say Pluto going into sixth house, if you don't mind taking like a few quick like briefing what sixth house is, Got like you. specifically. Yeah. No problem. So basically, and that's a really good question because uh, May of 2026, Pluto will be five degrees and that's going to exactly square your sun. So everything up into this point, you're going to be feeling the pressure. Of course, all the um, early born Scorpios, right? We see you here with October. You're going to get it first. And especially, okay. as, especially as a Pluto Scorpio too, this is going to come in uh, once again, very uniquely. So with that being said, um, the sixth house is the house of your behavior and your lifestyle. So you have okay. your mind, 
right? Your mindset and your thoughts become your behavior. Your behavior becomes your philosophy. And then your philosophy becomes your spiritual beliefs. So okay. the, the third house is your mindset, which is Scorpio, a very pure psychoanalytical mindset that breaks to the, the root core of how people think. You literally can just see through this, break this apart, transform it. You can transform people's attitudes because you have a purely extreme social attitude towards really speaking about things that are deep. I mean, third house Scorpios do not do small talk because nope. <laughs> <laughs> you probably despise it, right? So it's like, yeah. <laughs> Which is I'm so glad that uh, resonates too because there's just yeah. so much. People will just like walk by me and I'll just say something that's like just stirring the pot or like something about someone just died. I'm like, was it the vaccine? Like little things right. like that. And I'll just get right. into it and then. That's so wild. So you said You're May 21st. Yeah, your video completely froze when you were saying that too. I, right when you said, is it the vaccine? It just kind of froze and then glitched to is it May 21st, which I thought was such an amazing synchronicity. Like that's that's probably what they see when you say that. Like everything just glitches around them. Like, what did she say? Like, and they don't even know how to think properly. <laughs> well, because I'm not supposed to be talking about shit like that at work, but I just still do it because I don't care. So <laughs> And see, I love that because Scorpio and Pluto is taboo. So it's like you'll just unearth what people are the hidden they're living in the room, what people are, you know, really feeling. And it's like, if they're not at peace with that, they're going to project it on you. But that I love how you said that because um, one, the attitude here in Scorpio now integrates in the sixth house. So that's the relationship between the third house and the sixth house, where now with your chart, the pure mind state you have now with Aquarius, there is a detached, knowledgeable way to integrate this mindset into your way of life into how you're able to live this, right? And you completed that process the last two years, from 2021 to 2023. And so now, like, you, you're able to apply this, this advanced behavioral element. And the thing with the sixth house is, the sixth house is your work. The sixth house is your lifestyle. It's how you apply your attitude and when you complete the sixth house, you're able to create a routine and make a living off of it, which Saturn has, has hooked you up with now. And now that you've completed building that. <clears throat> and so based on your lifestyle, the sixth house Aquarius is going to now integrate into the ninth house Taurus, where you're grounding this philosophy that takes the advanced nature of how you live your life to, in a very solid way, approach how you show that to other people, lead by example and teach. And so what's cool here is this is a very unique period where before we had this Taurus completion, a lot of your mindset was really open to criticism, not like it won't ever stop being that way. But now with this Taurus energy, a lot of what you're saying that might be taboo, that might rub people off the wrong way, there's receipts for now. Now Taurus mm -hmm. is hey, it's actually real. Like you're speaking to what's real on them and it could even make them more mad because it's like, <laughs> you it out, or they just have to accept it because the Pluto energy here is destroying that ego. It's, it's really in a position to provide more insight and illumination. Um, but I really do like that approach where you're not really afraid to really speak up or at least share what it is you truly feel. Uh, which is definitely very important. So yeah, that's a, a way of seeing that. Once again, 2026, we are going to see this element of Pluto here that squares your sun. By the time Pluto squares your sun, you are extremely awakening the lifestyle that you have just constructed to the next level. And this is what's going to quintessentially begin to transform how much more extremely you integrate this element. So that's going to be the challenge of, of finding ways to really more practice the, the, the deeper element of these abilities that the South Node in Scorpio has unlocked. So now you, you have so much more sauce behind what it is you're communicating, how it is you express these skills and abilities. 
So once we step into Gemini season, the square between Pluto in Cap in Aquarius at zero degrees, and then the North Node at two degrees and Jupiter at zero degrees is for everyone going to induce this shifting of the cycle. It's going to be like turning a revolving door. And for you, this is what's going to begin to evolve the element of your philosophy. But because this is going to also be right opposite your sun, this is what's going to be that huge burst. So March 21st is going to bring that push towards what you want to think up until this point. You have put in construction and put fertile soil onto the land of what values you want and believe you're supposed to have in your relationships. You're a lot more square on that now. So once Jupiter goes through there, it's going to evolve it. It's going to really now sprout it like Jack and the Beanstalk style with Uranus. It's going to grow very quickly. So uh, I feel like that square, uh, since your son is there, you're going to be a lot more aware of what old mindsets you can release in light of this new evolution that will integrate how you currently feel now. It's going to really click and connect, whereas I feel like a lot of things could have been hit or miss. Now it's just hitting, and now you can build on that. So once we step into Gemini season, it's going to begin to manifest everything that you've built relative to your philosophy around your partnerships. And this is where you're going to come into a very quick awareness of how to begin to change your mindset around what career goals you want. Mars has already done its retrograde last the, the year prior, and it's gone through Gemini already. So you've already moved forward and already taking action towards what ideas you may want. So Gemini is going to make you aware of what to actually move forward with. There's going to be a lot of ideas that you're blessed with relative to uh, what you're inspired to also not only come into, but what you will be achieving for the work you've already done coming up into this space. So Gemini season is interesting because we know that Saturn is in Pisces and the first like five, 10 days of this transit is going to facilitate that initial square uh, with the sun in Gemini. And what that really brings apart is this initial challenging of your beliefs the the week of the end of may which is going to bring a, a beginning of this cycle of changes the first checkpoint that we'll have through gemini virgo and sag season since saturn entered pisces um with that being said this initial square is going to challenge your beliefs to make sure that the thoughts you're thinking align with what you want to believe. In this case, Pisces represents the creativity that you are allowed to express with other people because of Neptune in your seventh house, which is sponsoring divine partnerships and demystifying the delusional ass nature of people who want to bring their delusions to you for some reason because they feel like you're the right person to just dump them on and before the virgo is like excuse facts facts <laughs> facts please so you know this is really cool because um relative to the sense of creativity now the ideas you're having around what success is possible are changing because your beliefs relative to who you're meant to partner with are establishing themselves. You're starting to take that more seriously, your approach towards your relationships more seriously. Now, the way you're gonna think about who you can achieve success with will, will start to challenge, all right, what relationships align with this? Mm -hmm. So Gemini season, right, will help you monitor are the relationships with people holding you back from these career goals or are they pushing you forward? That's gonna be a very important initial test especially while Jupiter will be on the nodes and the conjunction of the sun and Uranus in your ninth house is initiating a new cycle where throughout this year, you're going to be learning more innovative qualities, right? About what you can come into. So ninth house transits like this facilitate higher education. Um, you could be in a position where you're taking an online course or you're offered to learn something new or teach mm -hmm. something. I'm getting my certification. There we go. There we go. That's beautiful. And the thing with Uranus is this is not traditional. So it's not like the four year bachelor's degree. It's, it's, 
going to favor something more unconventional that hasn't been done. You're pioneering. So more people will do it because you did it first, right? And you're kind of bringing that awareness out here. So it's good to know you're already working on a program. 2023 is going to be more of the completion of the certification and preparing you for the 10th house in Gemini, where you're going to now use the certification, where that's now a part of your legacy and reputation which is beautiful. So you're already going to start to know this Gemini season. What 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 am I going to do with this certification? Like you're going to come into great ideas about what's possible so that by next year, once Jupiter goes into Gemini and evolves your career, you already got your certification, your career is evolving. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be very fun. It's going to be challenging, but I think you're going to enjoy it because- So yeah. sh- sh- would you rather me tell you at the end of all these, how things that you said completely um were spot on or if i quickly interrupt you or (laughs) no that's a good question because i like to do the reading and then find out but then sometimes certain things you say help me understand and read better yeah so i really don't know i'll do it really quick um i'm getting my personal training certification but since i met this sagittarius um, I've realized that the personal training part is just one small aspect of it. Um, it kind of takes a village in a sense where when someone wants to heal or, you know, reach their goals in life, cause I truly believe our bodies were designed to heal themselves and power of the mind, everything we do, our lifestyle choices. He was just, uh, he was just offered to o- uh, open his own biohacking facility in Texas. And so he wants me to come work with him after I get my certification. So that's Uh, like everything like, um, frequency, uh, frequency medicine, uh, red light treatment, um, like the exercise, physical part, physical therapy, part of it, like cold plunging, cryotherapy, like everything, nutrition, getting your labs run, seeing to the core, to the root of everything, like completely the opposite of what Western medicine is. So that's, that's exactly what's happening. So it's a pioneering for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Especially now that makes so much sense. I'm so glad you're that's Uranus in the ninth house and teaching people unconventional methods towards reclaiming their this is what I'm reading right now. I don't know if you can see it. It's called How Primal Re- Resonance. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All Dr. right. Smith. I'll let you finish. Sorry. And, and please please don't hesitate to interrupt because that was really I have chills. Like that was really amazing to know. And that that brings up even knowing that see what you gave me a light bulb moment because my fourth house is in Leo and I at some point worked in the Leo King studio, right? The fourth house of home. He was a Leo. And so now your fourth house of home is Sag and the Sag is giving you a place to <laughs> operate. I can't make this up, which is amazing, <laughs> right? I also Super. watched on the full moon. You had that, um, it was with, I forget, Rio and Ryan or something. Rio and Ryan, yeah, yeah. And he's in Mexico. He's a Scorpio. And then the other guy, I don't know who he was because I, I actually fell asleep. But uh, he was, he was uh, Sagittarius, so. Sagittarius. And he was yeah. talking about all the stuff that you were bringing up biohacking. So you've helped me tremendously with the whole our thoughts part of it. Like, mm-hmm. I have all your stuff on my wall. I instantly manifest. Like, you could just, like, everything that I have that I take notes from that you help me on that mental side of it 100%. Because we are limitless and we are, we have so much potential for amazing things like to be superhuman in our sense and so um you've definitely helped me with that and the Sagittarius has helped me with that as well so (laughs) I love that in fact that's also cool because Sagittarius's relationship house is Gemini so it'd be interesting (laughs) it'd be interesting if during Gemini season your connection with him develops since you're right so that'd be interesting on the full moon I know it sounds really messed up, but I'm not a pet person, but he had a dog for 13 years and the dog passed away on Mm. Friday. And I actually, after I I knew something was up, I had a feeling I could just feel it in my bones. And then he called me and told me his dog passed sweet ass dog. I met, I'm not even a pet person, but I really liked this dog. Um, And as he was saying bye, he said, He said the three words, I love you. (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, I didn't know 
what to say and I just was like all right bye and I like clicked <laughs> Um, but he's like mentioned it one more time and I don't know if it's, he's in a vulnerable state or he's finally feeling like he could say those, but the Leo that I was with, it took a year to hear those words. And when he said it, it was like, you know, I love you. Right. And it was <laughs> Cause they're so prideful. That's hilarious. This is so funny. Like, damn. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to reprogram myself cause that Leo really like messed me up because I thought that there was a certain way to receive love or how things should be, but that's not the case. So I'm- Leo I'm, wishes they were Sag and that they can say it. They just have so much pride. It's like, my pride won't let me, oh, I got it. <laughs> but yeah, I was so, yeah, it is what it is. But like, yeah, I mean, that was, I needed to know that because I have this theory that when when souls die, the full moon is where the dead souls go through that portal mm -hmm. so if, you, if someone dies on a full moon i feel like that's meant to happen in a certain way and i get this weird feeling that the dog's timely death was probably meant to happen that way but now that has that was like a sacrifice that cleared space for both of you to grow closer together i think do you want to hear something fucked up <laughs> i was thinking the same thing i was like well, you know, I think it was time and the dog passed on its own at home. It wasn't like right. he put it down. It was natural. And right. I was like, thinking like maybe this was meant to be so he could have room for me and yeah. like make sure that him and I go to the next level and I'm his new companion in a sense. But I was like, that sounds really. <laughs> no, that dog hooked it up. It's like, okay, it's my time to go. <laughs> She's good for you, bro. <laughs> I approve. That's so wild. And uh, yeah, that's really interesting. So by the time we step into cancer season, a lot of the deeper wisdom around like your relationships and what's been brewing since like beginning of the year will now start to come together because this is going to be the 11th house. This is going to be rewards from your career. So a lot of what you are facilitating this Taurus season that Gemini is going to give you the experience of success. The MC, you're going to be sharing a lot of messages. I think this could also set up an advanced platforms with which you may not really do much with now, but you will be surprised how important and significant it is later. So just really, you know, be guided through your inspiration. But cancer season is going to feel really good relative to the rewards from your career you're coming into and also you being in this position to facilitate effectively and accordingly this grand awareness of who belongs in your life and where you belong, which is important because since Saturn is in your seventh house, now this testing quality is going to make sure that the people who are in your circle of friends throughout the next two years are Saturn certified. Like they passed the test of even being in a relationship with you. They passed the eight house <laughs> boundary. So thankfully it's going to add a lot more grounding. You're going to apply the beliefs around what you want in partnerships and how creatively you can be relative to now who feels good in your corner, in your circle. And now Pluto's not in Capricorn. I mean, Pluto is going to retrograde back into Capricorn during this period. So this is just going to reawaken a lot more of maintaining this courage to really rep your beliefs around who you belong with in the face of the collective, but also reawaken more creativity. I think this is going to really open up a breakthrough in how much more confident and assertively you express yourself in your community or around the right people. What I also thought was really interesting is that Aries is the sixth house of Scorpio. And Aries, the sixth house is also a house of training, personal trainers. And since Aries is sixth house to your Scorpio son, um, unlike Tauruses who cooperate for work or do more social work as an individual, Scorpio is the social that does more personal training, personal work, because Aries represents that you're independent in your lifestyle. You, you take your own actions mm -hmm. in order to. So that can translate to personal training. And in July, the North Node is going to go into Aries. Ooh. 
So it's literally aligning your destiny to, and then th that personal training sixth house Aries is in your eighth house. So this is how you deal with people, draw boundaries. It's opening up self-employment for people to trust you with how you build partnerships and relationships. That makes sense with the second house Libra. And it's, it's a really good look, especially because the name of the game for the South Node in Libra now is, whereas before you were using your attitude to manifest this philosophy and this, this higher wisdom, you took all your skills to now get the certification the South Node in Libra is using your classic value, your ability to build partnerships, to invest in individuals. This is a very powerful position because if it was the other way around, you're having to trust other people or you're having to get other people to trust you so that they can, which isn't bad, but it's just the reverse focus. They're going to invest. Mm -hmm. in you. But now you're taking what you have. You're taking your value and intellect and you're investing in the right people who you trust can actually make something of it. In this case, you're investing your expertise to train people, to help transform people to where they'll be more in their personal power. And this is even, this is so, I have chills because Chiron is Aries, right? So now this is aligned with healing and we know that you're using the personal training to heal people. So everything is literally so aligned for you. Like you're, you're literally, you know. It, his Chiron is an Aries, that's Sagittarius. So he's born yeah. like in the seventies? Yeah. Nice. 76 so or something, yeah. Word. Anyway, I love all that. That is giving me chills. That is so spot on. No way. All right. So, yeah, basically, June and July are, in a sense, transitioning Jupiter that is moving into uh, Taurus. And coming into uh, the end of June, moving into July, Jupiter will be opposite your sun. And as it begins to oppose your sun more, this is actively expanding the quality of how much more rich and grounded your relationships are and how that adds to, of course, your philosophy here. But on top of that, you initiated this cycle of evolution 2018 relative to your sun. So you've completed it now. That opposition is now six years worth of evolving yourself. And what does that look like? You're completing the certification. You're manifesting so much more valuable and wealthy partnerships, which is beautiful. So this is going to drag from harvest to Jupiter and Leo, which now you're harvesting this evolution for the next like four years, which is really cool. And with that being said, um, by the time we step into now Leo season, the middle of July is going to bring that north nodal entrance, like July 10th, into Aries, right? And the entrance, the new moon in Cancer on the 17th of July is going to be opposite Pluto. It's going to be trying Neptune. And I feel like during this period, it's going to really give you, it's going to be a brand new cycle of stepping into, especially by the time we step into next year, more depth of sincerity and quality with your friendships and great rewards that I feel like will open up more autonomy and freedom moving forward. That's what's going to lead us to Leo season. So by the time we enter Leo season, Venus begins its retrograde in Leo and Mars is going through your rising. So June and July is going to bring Venus and Leo through your 12th. Um, this month, 12th house transits get really deeply spiritual, but this can also bring up insecurities and lethargy. So you might feel like either not doing much or pro producing creative projects behind closed doors. It's like you're working on stuff privately. If you feel low energy, that's just a 12th house, because by the time Mars goes back over your rising, you're gaining this energy again. You're reinvigorated but interestingly enough, this retrograde of Venus through Leo, while Leo season begins late July, August, is one, 10th house from your Scorpio. So Leo season is your awareness of career success, where you're coming into this inspirational creativity in the spotlight, but it's hidden in the 12th house. So this is going to transcend the element of your awareness of what success means to you 
And it's going to completely change your perspective in light of recent evolution towards what's possible because now Jupiter is in Taurus. So the square that we're going to have from Leo to Jupiter is going to transcend elements of this evolved facet of your philosophy in the sense where you're getting ready to complete your certification. Now, what you believe you can achieve is different versus when you just started or before you even got there. So you're going to come into the awareness of, oh, okay, this is possible this opportunity this is what i want more venus is going to really reevaluate what you desire throughout this whole season it's going to really transform elements of your spiritual beliefs because i feel like now that you've leveled up there's more that you may now be in a position to facilitate but that 12th house region is definitely going to challenge you to really uh stay true to the values that you kind of stick towards. And by the time we move forward into Leo, the week of the end of July, Mars is in your first. By the time Mars and now Mercury joining your first, we're, we're even going to have a Mercury retrograde. So this is very interesting. But of course, the Leo transit, let's see. So it looks like Mercury retrograde is going to be during Virgo season. So that Leo season is going to, first of all, it's crossing over of Venus will be the week of August 14th. That's going to be the new moon as well. So that new moon in your 12th is going to transcend a very different approach towards how it is you want to live your life and how much more creatively you infuse your beliefs. I think, especially with the square to Jupiter, there's a huge number on your spiritual beliefs that's going to open up more freely. And I think it's because a very powerful aspect of your superpowers are awakening more. The nodes are in Aries. So this is getting ready to really move you towards dealing with others. And that's where once we move into Virgo season, one, Mercury and Mars in your first house are moving you forward towards expressing your personality. But now we have Mercury retrograde. So the week of September 4th, Venus goes direct in Leo. The sun is on your first house and Mercury retrograde is getting ready to meet the sun. So Mercury retrograde is meeting the sun right next to your AC. And this is reevaluating how you analyze your personality because now you've transcended your beliefs after leveling up your partnership, your philosophy on partnerships, and then strengthening the standards of your relationships and i mean saturn saturn and pisces is preparing you for marriage and at least this divine counterpartship so personally or just serious partnerships so this is where virgo season is going to be your debut chapter one jupiter you're in chapter nine i like to see it like that where like every year is a new season <laughs> of sitcom and virgo rising is season one of that year so uh <laughs> Right. So that means now up until August, you're closing the previous season. And that's where Leo season leaves you on a cliffhanger where it's like up in the air, like, oh, wow, there's brand new opportunities that I may have never entertained, but I'm so much more qualified now like I was before. But now I'm so much no. more sure of myself. So, boom, Virgo, we step into this and it begins with an entire reevaluation of how you analyze yourself. A lot of qualities you may have overlooked or certain things that were latent are no longer latent. And so this is having you reanalyze your personality as someone who's more awakened and sure of yourself. And that's gonna be a very interesting period around your uh, AC. The way you identify yourself and express yourself is not only gonna reflect this change, but where is all this Virgo energy opposite Saturn and Neptune retrograde in Pisces. And so this is just gonna reinforce how much you at this Virgo element are holding space for your personality to maintain the beliefs of who you're meant to be with. So it's it's you more living as the person you want to. So basically from June to September is the reorganization of your thoughts and behavior. So you live as if the person who has the relationship you want. And this is that process of doing so. So from September to Sagittarius season in November is you getting ready to manifest the results for maintaining this mindset and behavioral approach, which is even cooler now because moving forward, Venus is getting ready to come out 
of your 12th house coming into the next month and the new moon that we're going to have um, coming into, of course, the 13th, 14th of December is going to be in your first house opposite Neptune, uh, while Mercury retrograde is opposite Saturn retrograde. And this is going to, this is, this is going to try in the Taurus and, and Uranus. So you are now embodying the nature of everything you're learning in this course. You're embodying a sense of your evolved philosophy. You're able to now critically break down how to be everything that you have been learning and teaching through this and this is you more personifying this boom now you manifest it in libra through taking the actions to be this person and how you're building your relationships with others and manifesting value and moving forwards more dynamically and socially that being said we know that uh mercury will now go direct over your rising at the end of Libra season coming into September 21st. So this ending of the revaluation, you're now ready to move forward with this different and post new moon, new version of expressing yourself, which is more empowered, which is leveled up in this rising star year, which is more sure of yourself. Boom. Libra season is going to begin the process of manifesting the value of your partnerships, but it's also the eclipse. So that full moon eclipse that we have on September 9th is going to make you very clear towards how good you are at what you're about to do. I think it's going to be a huge sneak peek of letting you realize that things are getting ready to transform. You're understanding the direction you're moving towards while you're being aware of old values. The purpose of this North Nodal Transit is to reflect how yesterday's price is not today's price. So a lot of what you were good at doing, you're so much better at doing. Like it takes you less time to do it. So now this is giving you an idea relative to your dealings with others, what you're worth, what boundaries you want to place, um, how much more people want to work with you. And that's going to now translate more into uh, coming into that new moon in a couple of weeks, that new moon eclipse that we are going to have at the end of Libra on the South Node is going to now activate this new cycle of unlocking your value and unlocking the power of what you're truly worth so that you can align more your dealings with others and this training with how this will heal them. And this is the pipeline to really now put the active function towards this passive income or, you know, income that you may be able to manifest or self-employed income. Whereas Taurus in the North Node set your roots on where you're ready to go. Aries is just finally going. Venus at this point is opposite zero degrees Saturn retrograde. That's going to go direct. So that Venusian opposition will also now on your rising prepare you to beautify your personality, polish elements of your personality and step into this grounded beauty. It's definitely going to be an awesome makeover that we all have once a year, but I think it's also going to help you identify more with the themes of the quality of relationships you want. Boom, we step into Scorpio season and during your solar return, now you're aware of this Jupiter opposition, which is retrograde. So Jupiter retrograde is taking this expansion and evolution and it's having you reevaluate, okay, what are we, what are we going to do with this quality? How are we going to resort this by this period? You're back into your sun sign. And so you're aware of a year's worth of how much has changed and how you personally want to approach psychologically these dynamics. Um, especially relative to the sun conjunction we had in Jupiter, that's all going to complete coming into October, November. So you will be so much more clear on what kind of returns on the investments based on the quality of the partnership this work has gained you and in how much you deal with other people as a result. Mercury, sun, Mars, and Scorpio is going to be opposite, of course. Jupiter and, and, and Chiron or, or, or Uranus. But now that trine that Scorpio is going to make to Saturn is going to reinforce this transformation of your attitude. And it's going to strengthen so much more at this state where you're so much more aware of what you want, the beliefs of, of what you feel these partnerships should be and how much more creatively you can step into it. Boom. Saturn now goes direct coming into the next few weeks 
while Venus now enters Libra. And this will now polish how much more, whereas Libra season opened up the ability for you to start making money uh, in this new way, Venus is now going to balance and polish and clean this up so that this, of course, it runs more efficiently and, and ease through Scorpio season. And of course, uh, once we break out into Sagittarius, this might even be around the place where, if not before, you're revisiting, you know, working with the Sagittarius in his home space, or at least uh, coming into a much more ascended understanding of the meaning of the direction you've taken your career in. So this is going to set up a new six month chapter from uh, December to June of 2024, which is going to be important because by the time we make it to June 2024, Mar Mar Jupiter is ready to go onto your career house. So you're going to really understand how to position yourself and your foundation so that you can put in that work so that over the next six months, boom, you reach that uh, success. And it's all really going to unveil. You're going to come into much higher meaning of how to facilitate this. This is where the initial square that we had in Gemini season that challenged your thoughts around the beliefs and the partnerships, you're going to complete by now being aware of the meaning of what that looks like. And if you don't like how that looks like, you can adjust and change things to align with your beliefs. And if you like it, you can reinforce that. And we also know that you have Jupiter and Gemini. So when we come into that Gemini season in next month, Jupiter, I think, will buffer the square because now you're Jupiter squaring Saturn. And that's going to enable you this foundation of luck and this, you know, abundant ideas to really add more to what you do. And that opposition in Sagittarius will complete that by providing the vision of how to make complete sense of that. And now coming into the rest of the year is going to facilitate the hardcore extraordinary integration into your relationships with other people of this evolution with Jupiter and Taurus of your philosophy. And that's where Capricorn will break through super creatively relative to how powerfully you not only move forward with this, but develop a very powerful element of your talents and skills. And it does look like during December, we're going to have our third retrograde of Mercury uh, in Capricorn and then coming back into Sagittarius. So December 22nd, 2023, we're going to have zero degrees Mercury conjunct Sun in Capricorn, which I think is very huge. It's going to sextile Saturn that's direct now. It's going to trine Jupiter. So that's going to definitely give you a great epiphany about what actions to start organizing things towards. Um, a lot of the friends you may have made during the summer, now you're going to cr have s s creative projects to work with them with or perform to. Uh, but this is definitely going to, now that Pluto is coming back out of Aquarius, reawaken your inner child and show you once again how much you've evolved and grown through this process. The square to the nodes during Capricorn season will also challenge whether what you're doing you have fun doing. So it's going to make sure that you're able to add more constructive creativity so that it doesn't take you away from uh, what you're meant to do and to make sure that the boundaries drawn are drawn very properly so that this could facilitate this. So Capricorn season has the potential to be fun. The Mercury retrograde is going to reevaluate where you feel comfortable and at home uh, really doing what you do relative to I would say by August to um, August to, to October, massive redefinition of self, massive transformation that reflects this evolution of your partnership. So it's like the work is being put in to evolve the partnerships. And then six months from now, by your birthday, it's like, oh, wow, look at it. Like we're manifesting it. It's here. We're going back around and do it again. And by the time we get into Aquarius season, once again, that, that conjunction that the sun will have to Pluto. So we're going to have a 29 degree conjunction of Sun and Pluto at the very end of Capricorn before they both move into Aquarius, which is super wild. 
And that's going to trine your Venus. It's going to sextile your Mars. So that date, uh, January 19th, is very significant because I think that's going to awaken a more extreme push and alignment towards how it is you take these creative ideas and move forward with the right people. And so with that being said, I think they even move into Aquarius together. How cute. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> That's really interesting. So Aquarius season is going to start with zero degrees Pluto, and it's going to make you more aware of how you are transforming and awakening this element of your lifestyle. But now that you are expanding more of your philosophy, because now Jupiter is direct and it's getting ready to move into Gemini. And as it will cross over Uranus closer to April, this is going to really do a lot to now push you towards the final part of this rising star year for you. And it prepares you to reach out to more people so that once you're in the 10th house, you're engaging the public and people are receptive to your messages and it's expanding everywhere. It's going everywhere. It's not, I mean, whether you're on the internet or not, you may go viral or come into more notoriety during this period or be attached to something that kind of does that. Mars and Mercury are also going to be in Capricorn and Venus will be catching up to this very quickly. So the stellium that we have in Capricorn, while everything makes its way to Aquarius, will now take everything that the sun made you aware of and begin to work on that. It's like the sun will make you aware of, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. Boom, then Mercury, Mars, and Venus will come through and you'll you'll get that done. And as it's moving ahead to gain knowledge uh, with the sun, you'll also with Mercury, Mars, and Venus, your mind, your heart, and your desire and drive kind of move forward and apply this sense of knowledge. And the reason why Aquarius season is really key here is because this is definitely going to organize and integrate a very advanced lifestyle relative to how you're working with your philosophy. So it's like before you were awakening the sense of your lifestyle, but now you're taking the certification course. So it's like, okay, now that I'm getting ready to graduate, I can use what I'm learning from this course to begin to be like, okay, I'm going to do this in my lifestyle to align with this. I'm going to do this. Like it's going to kind of help prepare for that. Boom, Pisces season, we integrate all of that back again to your relationships. So relative to how you're setting more advanced your lifestyle with Pluto, I mean, we're literally going to have a stellium here by 18th of February, Pluto, Venus, Mars, Mercury, and the sun in Aquarius. So it is going to be a party. And this knowledge is going to really uh, put everything together in a way that I think will, will have you feel more in control than ever of not just your partnerships, but boom, once we step into Pisces season, now this is the first Sun-Saturn conjunction in Pisces we've had. The one we had before was at the very end of Aquarius. So this is going to anchor now with this full moon a a, a new cycle of the karmic lessons you're meant to learn to continue to change and deepen your beliefs around supporting relationships integrating these mechanics into your relationships and that's going to bring for a lot of karmic goodies if anything um you see le- so that was, that happened at the end of aquarius season the last and it's did gonna I, the same thing is gonna happen again in aquarius season yeah where the planets will kind of fall because mars and venus are trailing mercury mercury is going to Cross the sun Pisces season, but that new moon on March 10th, 2024 is going to be next to Neptune. And that's going to be huge. Saturn, sun, moon, Neptune is, in my opinion, getting ready to facilitate a very powerful divine union that's already in place. Because after this, the North Node will go over Pisces and then it'll be your destiny to explore these partnerships. So that means Saturn is the construction that's getting that into place now. Your seventh house is under construction. So that makes relationships challenging. It brings all sorts of people playing contrarian. It could feel like you against the world, but it's strengthening yourself. Like the only times I had YouTubers come for me and and say bullshit was when Saturn was in my seventh. But, you know, I clapped back owned them you know what i mean and and that's what it <laughs> made me stronger you know what i mean but like 
personally, I think that's a huge, like very auspicious, a powerful seventh house transit. So from, of course, uh, March of 2024 to September of 2024, that six month cycle is going to establish very key relationship lessons and themes that I think will strengthen to the next level these partnerships very powerfully while Jupiter is opposite your Scorpio sun leveling up these partnerships. And then once we get into Aries season, that eclipse in Aries is now going to conclude what Libra started by focusing more on what you have to offer to others. And Aries season is now going to focus more on what you're offering to others. Now that you spent six months strengthening and empowering your value, now this is going to set off more of your training, of you actually dealing with the right people, drawing these boundaries, really transformational period, uh, because this is definitely going to add so much more confidence in everything you know you're worth and being able to directly transform other people and to help them. And boom, that's what's going to lead us back into Taurus season, where we're going to have Jupiter and the sun getting ready to leave. 21st of April is when Jupiter will conjunct Uranus. Mars is going to be leaving Pisces and Mercury is going to be retrograde again in Aries. So personally, that Mercury retrograde in Aries all over the nodes are going to reevaluate the approach towards what you're doing, which means that you're going to take what you've learned right now and approach it a certain way. And by the time we get to that point in 2024, you're approaching it completely different because now you have more expertise. And and then we have to also keep in mind events that occur that will just affect everyone and, and change what's happening, which I feel will be a huge button point. And that leads us back to tour season, where now by this point, you've completed this rising star year. Jupiter is getting ready to move out of Taurus and you have evolved to the next level, the quality of your partnerships, and you are now more so abundant in the rich quality of what you've learned and what you're ready to teach and practice. And yeah, I really, please keep me posted because this is a dope year for you, for sure. I'll, I always re-listen to these things like few times so i'll be very excited to listen to this months down the road close to that next year and see how everything has gone on and then i will follow up with you <laughs> and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask okay uh, you can give me an email that's totally fine or whatever. yeah and i'll have some receipts for you so <laughs> <laughs> sounds great I'm excited about the next step for you. I really hope, uh, I really know you, you'll be changing people's lives with your, your healing and with your training. So I'm very excited too. And thank you for that. It means the world. Awesome. Woo! Alrighty. Well, you have a blessed week. I'm going to send this to you right now. Perfect. And yeah. All right, Michael. Thank you. No problem. Uh, appreciate you once again for calling in. I definitely enjoy these and yeah. I'll see so you spot later. on. Everything is so spot on. And I know in the future I will be following up with you for everything else that you hit on point. So <laughs> beautiful. All right. <laughs>